Joining us now from CNBC's CEO Council Summit in Washington, D.C., Hologic CEO Steve McMillan. It's great to see you today, Steve. How advanced uh, are the, are, is the process of installing AI into the way you're doing business, into the way you're delivering health care? Thank you, Jess. It, it depends by product. For example, in breast health, we've made incredible strides over the last years, and it's very developed. In the case of, for example, our digital cytology, which is the PAP test, we just got a product cleared earlier this year, so that's in the very early stages of rollout, so we're incredibly excited about the opportunities there ahead. There's news today at CNBC.com on the front page about um, a, a company called Sword Health using AI to talk to patients about pain. When, it, when you look at the way that you could advance uh, the kinds of things that Hologic does, does any of that get outsourced to vendors or do you develop it all within uh, Hologic itself? We're doing a combination of internal development and partnering in certain cases with folks who may have specific ideas. You know, at the end of the day, when you think about the big picture, what we're seeing is a crunched or, you know, overworked healthcare workforce, advancing technologies, and really at the core, at the highest level, very much disparities of care. So people are getting very different reads and the ability to bring all that together using AI, I see as the magic to really bringing the level of healthcare and treatment up across the board. So you take the, the lowest common denominator and bring it way up. Steve, I, I, more specifically, what problems are being solved by AI? Is it accuracy? Is it the speed of processing? Is it the ability to use fewer uh, human workers uh, in, in your product lines? It's actually a bit of everything. If you think about it in radiology, what it's allowed is, for example, when we invented 3D mammography, it created a lot more images. But what the machine learning and now the AI is able to do is help the radiologist get to the image faster and see it clearer than they could have on their own and then get to quicker diagnosis. We've reduced false positives. We've also increased the ability to not have, you know, all these callbacks and everything else and are detecting more cancers. We're now bringing in the same thing to the PAP test. And one of the analogies I use for people is because we sponsor the WTA, if you think about the old days of lines, linesmen calling the shots and now they have what they call Hawkeye. Right, where the machine is able to get it 100% right. That's what we're bringing to medical technology. Is this technology that um, developing countries and, and healthcare systems there will be able to afford? For instance, you know, I serve on a board right now of a nonprofit that is dedicated to trying to end preventable reasons for maternal mortality. What they see is in a lot of places, including areas of the United States, where you're talking about the disparity in health care, a lot of it happens because there's no money. In, in Kenya, for instance, if there's no money for an, an ultrasound, then women can suffer uh, adverse outcomes. Can a, a hospital in Kenya afford a hologic system that can democratize the, the screening of cancer? Yeah, in many ways, one of the big, there's both the capital outlay, but one of the big issues has been, frankly, a lack of, for example, cytologists or radiologists. It's been as much on the labor pool as well. So the ability to take a lot of the need for that labor out is actually making these both more economical for the system. And we're also working out different models where it's not all capital, but it can be lower capital up front, but recurring revenue as they use it to really keep working. And in fact, Africa has been one of our higher growth areas over the last five years because we've been bringing different ways to help bring our products there and different ways to commercialize.